Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Let's go over through the rest of the headlines that we're tracking for you. The fourth one is a CNBC TV18 exclusive. HDFC Life has applied to the insurance regulator for permission to enter into the indemnity health insurance space. Sources say the insurer is likely to focus on critical illness products post the IRDAI approval. Yash joins in for more on that. Yash, what are you picking up? Well, Reema, this is uh, nothing but the second largest life insurance company planning to enter in a market which is worth about 75,000 crore rupees. Uh, what we've been given to understand from our sources is that HDFC Life has applied to the insurance regulator IRDAI and this is to seek the regulator's permission to enter the indemnity health insurance market. Do remember uh, that uh, currently life insurance companies are only allowed to sell fixed benefit health insurance products which is a negligible amount of the portfolio. The larger amount is indemnity health, the business which health insurance companies and general insurance companies do and that's the permission which uh, HDFC Life is seeking from the regulator to enter. Uh, if you remember just uh, a couple of months back the government has floated a consultation paper uh, seeking to amend the insurance act under which life insurance companies will be allowed into general insurance space and vice versa uh, now this approval for hdfc life from the insurance reg regulator depends uh, on whether the parliament session this time around in the budget session approves those amendments in the insurance act that is one thing the second positive for hdfc life insurance is that they've also asked the insurance regulator uh, to be allowed to distribute various other financial products, uh, be it bank deposits, loans, mutual funds, other insurance products. So that also opens up a new business stream, a revenue stream for HDFC life insurance. Of course, that uh, particular proposal also depends on whether the parliament uh, in the budget session approves the amendments to the Insurance Act. And then the regulator, if the approval comes in the parliament session, then the insurance regulator will have to take HDFC life's approval uh, for its consideration. Thank you very much for that. Moving on to individual stocks which were in the news. Gaming and hospitality major Delta Corp was down 3% after it posted a muted set of Q3 numbers. Hardik Debar of Delta Corp told CNBC TV18 that online gaming has been historically profitable for the company and it's made a cash profit of 1,100 crore rupees. Listen in. The online gaming business historically has been a profitable business. A couple of quarters before we start uh, seeing the results of uh, these investments, and I, I believe that in the next uh, maybe you know a couple of quarters, maybe three four quarters, uh, we should see kind of a steady state, uh, 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 you know, inching back towards the growth and profitability trajectory. That this is the first time ever in the history of Delta we've made a cash profit of over hundred crores. Let's move on to the other notable earnings. ICICI Lombard was down 4% after the net profit for the third quarter failed to meet street expectation. Surbhi is here with the fine print. The company has delivered a healthy 17% premium growth led by health and life uh, fire insurance. The PAT growth came in at 11%, slightly lower than estimates due to lower investment income and that's what the street is concerned about the most. The combined ratio was broadly stable at 104%. The ROE came in at 14.3%, similar to what it was same time last year. The management has guided for continued investments in the retail business and lower combined ratio in FI24 and improvement in ROE into high teens going forward. Most brokerages have cut their PAT estimates but still retain a buy rating on the stock. Morgan Stanley has an overweight rating with a target price of 1495. Jefferies and Motilal Oswal both have a buy rating with a target price of 1620 and 1500 rupees per share. Kotak has a reduced rating with 1225 as their target price. Okay, thank you very much for that, Surbhi. RVNL and Siemens gain after the consortium of the two companies was declared the lowest bidder for different phases of the Surat Ahmedabad Metro Rail project. Vivek is here with more on the deal. A consortium of RVNL and Siemens has emerged as the lowest bidder as far as two rail metro tendering projects are concerned. Uh, one of them is the Ahmedabad Metro Rail project. This is for the phase two worth almost 384 crore. And the other one is for the Surat Metro Rail project where the value of this particular order is over 670 crore. Now, this particular uh, consortium you know, is in the ratio of 65 is to, th is to 35 in favor of Siemens. And when you're talking about you know, how exactly this particular order will boost the order book of Siemens, now 
remember, even day before yesterday, Siemens had indicated to the exchanges that they had won a significantly large order win as far as locomotive engines were concerned. So rail activity as well as railway infra tendering activity is something that's aiding especially Siemens. Now, Macquarie has written a note on this particular development. They maintain an outperform rating. They're saying that the strong ordering momentum continues as far as the Siemens is concerned. This particular order for the rail metros implies an order inflow worth almost 688 crore with an execution timeline of 19 months. And they believe that the locomotive is going to be the key driver as far as Siemens order book is concerned going forward. Thank you for that. Landmark Cars was another stock that was on our radar, up 5% after the company reported a 41% growth in revenues in its nine-month FI23 business update. Sonia is here with the details. Landmark Cars, which is in the business of uh, its uh, premium luxury auto dealers, uh, now it's one of the largest dealerships in the country and the numbers are looking very good. Uh, they've given an update for the nine months of this fiscal and the total growth, the revenue growth that they've seen is very strong in excess of 41%. They say that there are multiple tailwinds in the business. One, income levels have gone up. Second, there is a rising preference for luxury cars. There are new model launches by the OEMs and uh, the preference is now leaning towards uh, luxury automobile ownership as I mentioned. The total revenues from operations are up 41% year-on-year year at 3,384 crores. Vehicle sales have gone up by 44%, while after-sales service and spare parts are up by almost 30% or so. The company has also opened three new outlets of the Baidi brand in uh, Delhi NCR as well as in Mumbai, and two new outlets of the Jeep brand. And they've also given an update on what they did with the IPO proceeds. 138 crores of the IPO proceeds have been used to repay their working capital loans. So positive business update coming through. Thank you for that. And finally, the fifth headline for the day. Crude prices gained 2%. It hit a one-month high after OPEC estimated that Chinese reopening will help global demand rise by 2.2% in 2023. But on the other side, continued supply of discounted Russian oil has kept prices in check. Manisha is here with more on this story. Manisha. Well, we are trading at a two-month highs nearly for the crude oil prices. Good gains continuing, so much so that we have turned positive now for 2023 till time. Well, the triggers comes in from OPEC, which says that last year global growth was at 2.5 million barrels per day. And this year it could be a build-up on that by 2.2 million barrels per day of a global demand growth. And then you have China, which says that 4% of an increase in import of crude is what they have registered for the month of December. And when it comes to the crude product exports, that gained up by 25% on a month-on-month -month basis as well. And then the markets also are looking at the dollar index still trading below 102. Markets do believe that as we move forward, there is more demand growth that can be anticipated, not just from traffic, but from aviation and furnace uh, demand as well. And then heating oil demand now seems to be surging up in case of uh, the Western countries. US and UK have finally seen winter hitting them and that demand seems to be moving up as well. Markets does believe that uh, from here on you could be looking at 85 to 100 dollars per barrel of a range continuing for the crude oil prices for the rest of this quarter. Manisha, thank you very much for that. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Thank you for watching.